very good morning and greetings to all our listeners. Today, in episode three of our interview series, we have Dr. Narendranath Patra from the Department of Astronomy, Astrophysics, and Space Engineering, IIT Indore. His research interests include radio astronomy, astronomical techniques, related software development, and extragalactical astronomy. Good morning, sir. We're glad to have you here. How are you? Good. I am good. I am good. Good morning. Good morning, you to all and everybody, all of your audience. Yes, sir. So, how are you doing today, sir? How has everything been? Yeah, it's been going good. A little bit of, you know, work pressure and other things, but that's quite normal. So, yeah, all is good. All is good. So, let's dive in with our interview. Let's dive in with the questions that we have prepared for you. Yeah, so yeah, sure. we were going through your web page and about your papers. So we have discovered that NGC 7331 or the Caldwell 30 galaxy is your mm -hmm. favorite galaxy. So could you elaborate on what image it represents in like layman terms? Yeah, so <clears throat> this uh, galaxy NGC 7331 is a very yeah, interesting galaxy in a sense. Uh, many of the time it is called uh, Milky Way's twin. Okay. Uh, so the characteristics of this galaxy is very similar to that of our own galaxy. And as you know, we are sitting inside our own galaxy. So we cannot go out of our galaxy and see how it is, you know, what is its dynamics and all of the properties. Uh, so NGC 7331 gives us a very kind of, uh, you know, nice platform to understand our own galaxy. So in that way, it is like, you know, many of the astronomers like me, uh, loves this galaxy you know so yeah so this galaxy is very good i mean you can observe this galaxy in multiple uh, web bands like in optical in radio and you can try to understand that how kind of this galaxy uh, you know originated what are the uh, kind of you know dynamics and the gas conditions star formation a lot of the properties how it is actually evolving and where this galaxy will go so that kind of also gives you a feel about like what is going to happen to our own galaxy like the milky way right yeah right great sir so you are uh, in which band do you prefer doing your studies in radio okay so um, i mean uh, my expertise is mostly in uh, radio astronomy and for your audience i would like to elaborate like uh, what it is so say for example if you have an uh, object or if you have a uh, kind of star right stars generally we do see in optical means the our eye is sensitive to optical band so if you see something light is coming out the by the light we means optical light but it is not necessarily that all the uh, objects in the sky for example stars galaxies they emit only in optical they emit in all full spectrum of the electromagnetic wave for example, if you have seen the remote, okay, uh, to switch on your TV, to switch on your uh, AC, so you, you know, switch on your remote and it starts, right? right. So it, it does not happen like that. It means, you know, you switch when you press the switch, some radiation goes from your remote to the AC, it activates and then it, you know, goes. So these communications and for example, your FM, you know, the FM station sends something and then you receive here. So these are radio waves, okay? And these radio waves are basically uh, emitted by all the galaxies as well, right? And they also give you very interesting properties. For example, you know, the electrons or the gas uh, in the uh, galaxies, you trace the, those gas by these radio waves. So my expertise is in this radio domain. So we have radio telescopes. I use radio telescope, uh, telescopes across the world and try to see what is going inside a galaxy using this band. But I do also use optical, ultraviolet ray and, uh, you know, infrared, other web bands. But my expertise is primarily in radio. All right. That's a great answer. Thank you so much, sir. So let me quote another sentence from your web page, which says, I have a huge crush on experiment and instrumentation. So what right. is your most yeah. recent project, sir? And uh, what have you been working on? Can you explain that to us? Right. So, I mean, 
uh, in physics or in other you know scientific uh, domain if you uh, look uh, so there are mostly primarily two uh, two to three a uh, broad domain which people you know develop expertise and that is kind of to some extent by choice and also to some extent the availability of resources for example right so say for example if you look physics astrophysics so there are two to three primary domain one is theoretical another is experiment and instrumentation and another is now coming up uh, computation right so uh, when you try to you know solve some problem or answer some deep questions you know related to galaxy formation be it galaxy formation be it the universe so on so you have two things first of all you need to understand theoretically that what are the governing principles right i mean if i say that this object will become you know smaller why what physics tells you about that so that is a the theoretical part then the next question will come that whatever theory i have kind of given or i have uh, you know tried to understand the worked out whether it is true or whether this object is following that or not so then you need to go and see it or perform experiment so there the perfor performance of you know experiment that actually kind of verifies uh, whether your theory is correct or not and it also many times you know most most of the times it also gives you new window to think you see something which cannot be explained whatever your general wisdom you have collected right so in that sense i like experiment very much because it is kind of you know gives you that feeling you know you see whatever is happening of course theory requires much of imagination but it is kind of the real uh, thing and that is very personal i am not saying you know this is good or this is uh, you need both okay right. so yeah so if you look at what we are doing at uh, dasi uh, department of astronomy astrophysics and space engineering so we have a telescope okay uh, which is like you know four element interferometer like four uh, dishes okay uh, that is kind of radio observatory so i actively uh, you know is involved along with our other colleagues uh, to build this instrument okay which will which which is actually working in uh, radio wave band so i mostly work on uh, back end part which is something called digital back end so if you have a telescope there is one dish which collect your rays then there is some electronics at the front end you know from the rays it goes to the uh, camera you can say uh, right at the top of the dish that is the front end and from there the signal comes down and you take it to a uh, central building where you process digitally you process it so that part i am kind of expertise and more interested the digital back end okay though we are you know when you perform an experiment or do an experiment you can't say that i only do this or do that you have to you know keep uh, doing all the things uh, but my expertise is in digital electronics uh, which related to uh, data processing radio astronomy data processing right so your say is instrumentation brings life to what theory presents which is a, which yeah, is a very good answer definitely yeah. thank you sir Sure. Yeah, space science is all about the inspiration and motivations so when you were starting with your career what was your motivation who was your role model at that moment okay so um, you know it actually gradually for me it's a bit uh, different i mean i i mean uh, my journey i i don't think that it is kind of copy book uh, journey uh, but it also uh, kind of very fascinating in a sense that earlier when i started my career i actually frankly did not like astrophysics as much okay and that is because uh, i kind of had a perception that it does not have any direct uh, application to human life in a sense right but over the and th this is actually true for many of our or, you know many of the audience uh, uh, who might argue in the same similar line that you know whatever you guys do uh, what is the uh, effect or benefit to the common people okay uh, so i now over the time i have realized that yes i was wrong and uh, now i really you know proudly can proudly say that i am an astrophysicist 
uh, that is primarily two reasons you know people who really want the answer in the other side like what is its its impact on uh, civilization or human life so i can tell you if you go and look at the last uh, uh, 10 years nobel prize okay and uh, it's a good exercise one can do that actually so i start my class with that 10 years uh, nobel prize and you will see i think seven or eight seven i think seven or eight something like that are from astrophysics okay and nobel prize is given actually uh, which has significant impact in our uh, civilization in our society right and that is the primary motto of uh, nobel you know prize so i mean that is that speaks for itself right that is one then the second thing uh, which has like more philosophical answer is that uh, anybody who is like you know ask you uh, that what is its impact how it changes just i request them uh, to kind of put up a telescope and look at the moon nothing else just one simple thing put up a telescope look through the eyepiece and just watch the moon okay and i am sure that many of kids many of the even adults and i have actually you know experienced it <clears throat> it kind of changes your perspective as human civilization your existence uh, all together and you i mean people would certainly uh, realize that you know we kind of uh, get stuck with very small petty things okay <laughs> the universe is much bigger our existence is a blip both in time and in space okay so we need to have that horizon that expansion of your thinking your mind it is actually helpful uh, in a good <clears throat> in a balanced society i would say so uh, as an astronomer i also tell my students as well and even like you know i appreciate uh, the kind of work you are doing uh, that take the astronomy to the people let them see the universe let them just think once in a while not you know regularly even if you think once in a while our existence our uh, position in the universe it will actually change lot of the perspective and young people who are like you know starting doing their school or you know doing their colleges uh, so if they come to know about the universe it is actually fascinating and from the scientific perspective also if you are an astrophysicist if you are doing astrophysics you need to know all the kinds of all the possible sciences you know all top all sorts of sciences to uh, kind of work out because you cannot do any controlled experiment in your you know astrophysics because the all the observations are sitting uh, law you know far far right yeah, and right. just to give a perspective the nearest universe like nearby universe what we call astronomers that our backyard the light takes 4 crore years 4 crore saal it takes to reach from that object to you okay that is the magnitude of the universe and that is we are calling that just next door okay so i mean so that kind of can you it it gives you a perspective right like even what is what we are you know fighting about what we are kind of the pity things we are stuck with yeah there are much larger things there absolutely sir absolutely. to have a great tree we have to have a great roots also a strong one yeah. but concerning yeah. with major achievements and uh, the things what are the hardship which all the astronomers follows uh, they face through all their journeys and what are your tips uh, for the budding people who are coming to astronomy field right yeah so <clears throat> there are uh, two perspective i will you know put over here uh, one in terms of global community and one in terms of like our uh, scientific community in india okay so if we uh, see that uh, kind of facilities uh, people have in throughout the world okay uh, first of all the astrophysics the experiments and the Uh, research so to speak uh, is limited to observations only okay and the signals which are coming from the space are very faint so you need really sophisticated uh, instruments and these instruments are really costly okay 
and uh, for example if i can give you one example is that the optics okay of uh, chandra telescope that is an uh, x ray telescope space based telescope that is the best optics you know ever produced in by human on earth okay so this is the most sophisticated optic optical instrument all right uh, then you take uh, jwst you take uh, uh, you know alma you take pla the sophistication in the instrument is quite challenging okay and uh, so but astronomers being driven by their interest uh, to explore the space they have dedicated their lives they have dedicated their efforts you know by money everything uh, to bring up these instruments but progressively over the years i mean the challenges what uh, i think uh, which is happening uh, these days like you know very recently is that people are doing science most you know it's going in in the direction where like uh, the science is driven by commerce in a sense uh, most of the science are sponsored uh, or like awarded such a way which will benefit uh, industry or some product or like you know it has a commercial aspect okay and the fundings are progressively being cut down uh, for basic sciences for example uh, basic things which will not give you immediate return for example right so astrophysics you know doing uh, research doing talking about universe whatever the technology you know you develop uh, that comes into you know mainstream or in the uh, civil life but that takes a time okay roughly typically you know uh, it you know 10 to 20 years it takes you know takes kind of a decade time scale uh, to have those technology sophisticated technology come into some real life application and other things okay but it it does have for example the medical imaging okay many many of the i can you know there are countless examples you know radio communication all these things have actually resulted uh, through the experiments of astrophysics but these days the things are going a bit haywer because uh, many of the scientific organizations funding agencies are driven kind of they want immediate output which is useful to solve immediate problem so that is one aspect you know we astronomers are facing these days and in terms of uh, in india the situation is not as bad i would say uh, as compared to you know the uh, uh, international community uh, but in india we have one problem is that our uh, kind of reach to the people or to the you know young audience for example is not as good okay we do have very world class you know there are many world class instruments and they are really uh, up to the mark and they compete they are in, in the international com community uh, international space they are as good as any other instruments for example we have the giant meter wave radio telescope in pune which is the world's largest radio telescope in uh, low frequency uh, radio wave band then we have uh, several you know sophisticated optical telescope okay run by iia indian institute of astrophysics uh, aries okay then we have uh, space based observatory astrosat okay we are uh, building uh, solar observatory aditya l1 we are building x ray polarization um, satellite polix right so these are up to the mark top but uh, the you know the access or the kind of general uh, knowledge or general awareness about these telescopes does not reach to the common audience like you know people who are studying in uh, plus 2 or studying in college so that they get exposure and come and work uh, uh, as a scientist in these institutes you know help to build these instruments help to build the technology the sophisticated technology so that is we need to work on and that is where uh, you people also come in you know you have uh i really appreciate the effort you people are taking which uh, kind of reach a much larger audience and they get interested they come and talk to us and you know other people in the community and we grow as a community and which absolutely helps uh, india as a nation and also uh, you know as a uh, as human kind for the whole world
absolutely sir with great uh, technologies we have already been proven that we have great discoveries so uh, like as you being a great researcher in field of uh, galaxies and star clusters we already have few questions uh, which are yet to answers uh, for the human kind like are we alone in this universe so what's your take uh, on this question that uh, what's your th- uh, thoughts about the fermi paradox or other things like are we alone in this universe do we have any other type of life form out there in any galaxies what's your call in this sir yeah so i strongly believe that we are not alone in the universe okay and uh, so if you see that how many uh, galaxies are there how many stars are there how many planets are there and just by mere probability okay uh, it can you know tell you that we cannot be alone even if you know this we are a blip in time and space that blip is expected to occur uh, many times at different places but the only problem is that uh, communication can we figure out like uh, uh, i mean if there is any intelligent uh, civilization or uh, intelligent uh, species uh, present in the uh, other part of the universe now whether can we you know reach out to them so that is a tough game i would say Uh, because our lifetime is very small as compared to the lifetime of the universe okay we are actually really nothing you know so uh, i strongly believe that there is life in the other part of the universe uh, but communicating to them is very difficult people are actively trying okay there is whole uh, uh, stream of astrophysics uh, who works on uh, seti that is search for extraterrestrial uh, intelligence and uh, there are many uh, indians also who are kind of uh, part of this one of my colleague bisal gajjal who is in uh, uc berkeley uh, and uh, he is also quite uh, you know actively trying to look for or you know uh, look for signals uh, which is extraterrestrial uh, you know coming from extraterrestrial civilization uh, you know so yes i believe there is but we probably have to wait for some time till our technology improves more we increase the search radius and also you know the other other side also give us some signal which is uh, detectable you know uh, truly sir and we also believe that with your guidance and support we would be finding something great in near future <laughs> yeah so our effort will be on as a community and uh, this is the fundamental question kind of you know we uh, ask from the beginning of the uh, civ- human kind civilization you know there are three fundamental questions uh, i think you know uh, people are looking for uh, where we came from where we are going are we alone okay so but hopefully at some point uh, we will get some of the answers you know okay since we have covered a lot of topics which is all to do with all the questions that we don't know of let's ask you something which is more of a fun question sir so uh, we have seen that you have a lot of thrill and a lot of adventures that you like to do in your past time do you like any particular movie or any such sci-fi movie or a tv show that you recommend all our new watchers to go ahead with okay <laughs> I am yeah I do like uh, sci-fi movies a lot and with a moral I am a uh, Marvel fan okay and uh, you know you know whatever I, I mean I would uh, recommend uh, people to uh, go and watch sci-fi movies because you know they ignite your imagination you uh, specifically you know Christopher Nolan's uh, uh, movie that is one aspect but you know even in the marvel uh, you know universe you will see a lot of the things uh, which they actually properly justified in terms of um, uh, scientific uh, you know scientifically they justify i mean it might look at like you know imaginarity uh, imaginary and you know happen in uh, near you know future but those also gives you a food for thinking in a sense that you know you would like to think okay can that happen oh that's interesting people can communicate through gravity you know uh, people can travel in interstellar space for example uh, this movie you know 
either you take gravity or you take uh, interstellar uh, all they show the space spacecraft how they dock how they detach you know how uh, you can uh, swing a spaceship around a planet and then the time you know delay paradox uh, you know time in one planet is different time in the other planet so all these things are quite you know it ignites me and uh, i'm sure you know there are people like me and you know go have fun think more yeah great great sir. uh let's ask you something about galactic travel what do you think <laughs> about that? do you think is it possible do you think some day ahead in the future we could go back in time and see us doing the same thing yeah going okay going back in time is uh you know uh our understanding of physics understanding of uh, science uh, doesn't allow us to go back in time but who knows okay uh regarding galactic travel i think that is still far away i mean the kind of technology we uh, till we have right now uh, is not sufficient uh, to kind of you know, achieve that speed or that power where Uh, it can take you to the galaxy and frankly the uh, the space is so vast it is uh, difficult but at least not intergalactic but i would expect that interplanetary travel probably would be possible if not in near future maybe in some time for example hopping between the planets will not be probably uh, too difficult or not too far maybe not my generation maybe my next generation might you know see it uh, but again so that is kind of you know the next leap of human kind you know the existence of the human kind and its kind of spread across the universe so that is quite fundamental to our own existence and if when it happens i will be actually, i mean even if i'm not alive but i will be happy <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah so that is that would probably be possible in uh, some time interplanetary travel but intergalactic travel that probably we really need uh, some technology breakthrough and uh, that is not on the only experimental side uh, the basic theoretical understanding does not allow us to do that you know to travel at least you know close to the speed of light as i said the light you know the nearby universe light takes around like 4 crore years to reach you now even if you travel at the speed of light it will take you like 4 crore years right so we don't have like, years so yeah i mean <laughs> so but anyway i mean who knows you know uh, some theoretical breakthrough and technological breakthrough might happen in next 100 200 300 years right definitely yeah. let's hope for that what yeah. do you think about the theory of wormholes do you think they exist <laughs> <laughs> okay tough question so no uh, the kind of you know theory uh, which uh, of course the existence of uh, black hole has been uh, quite uh, proven now you know, uh, the nobel prize also been awarded uh, for that uh, uh, but one hole i am not sure and uh, uh, though the theoretical uh, you know uh, theory people actually do suggest you know some of the uh, you know things can work out work out uh, but i am not sure actually till now uh, there no observation exists which kind of you know, support uh, this theory or you know the existence of wormhole okay uh, but we should keep searching we should keep looking for it okay and yeah i i can tell you uh, that much only i mean it's it just exist in theory as of now okay and observationally people have tried many you know looking many direction deep this way that way but we haven't come across yet the existence is not been proven beyond doubt uh, observationally so till we see it we say that okay it's a paint up thing and hope we we'll see at some point yeah definitely great sir thank you yeah yeah so so with great uh, discoveries and reach for the stars we need great instrumentation and recently we have our james webb telescope so how right. do you think it is uh, way different from other space based telescope and what are its uh, future scope for us yeah james webb uh, 
telescope uh, JWST is a very fascinating instrument. Uh, you are right that if you want to push the boundary of science, uh, you need to push the boundary of technology. You need, you know, uh, more sophisticated, more uh, kind of technologically advanced uh, instruments. And JWST is a, like really, really a you know feather in the hat. Okay, and it's remarkable. So the way it is different than other telescopes, the other, you know, the previous best telescope was Hubble. Okay. Now, if you see what makes a telescope great, is its uh, collecting area, how much signal it can collect, right? And that is uh, for JWST, it has a primary mirror which is basically the collecting the light from the space uh, is more than six meters. Okay, it is I think it's 6.5 meters. Okay, now Hubble, uh, it used to be, I think 2.4 meters. Okay, now if you increase the diameter, the area goes as square, right? If you increase the diameter by two times, the square increases by four times. So the collecting area is huge for uh, JWST and it is sitting in space it means you do not have any hindrance occurring due to the atmosphere there are bigger telescopes which is sitting in the ground for example eight meter class telescopes are there 10 meter class telescopes are there and now we are building like 30 meter class telescopes but when you put this you know half of it even like you know six meter uh, eight meter class telescope and this is like 6.5 meter when you put it in space things really changes because there is no loss of light due to atmosphere you have a lot of dust in the atmosphere you have a lot of turbulence in your atmosphere so which kind of you know throw or like remove the signal which is coming from the space and also because this turbulence that is in the summer day if you see or if you look at the far distance okay you will see that it is like the image is kind of dancing you know there is this uh, even you know in the top of your oven, yeah in the top of your oven uh, gas oven the you know things like jumps up right so that is because the refractive index of the atmosphere is actually changing constantly and then that, that makes life much difficult for astronomers who do optical astronomy so that is why even if you make bigger telescope in the ground they are not going to help much okay but the same thing if you put it in space it is fantastic and jwst is a fantastic instrument and this already like you know how much it's an, it's like a like couple of weeks now and it has actually shattered the discovery shattered the uh, kind of records the farthest galaxy you can see and the images are truly mesmerizing i mean if anybody says that okay why should i like astrophysics go and watch those images you know go and see those images i mean if it does not gives you kick i don't know what so yes jwst is a fantastic instrument and it is going to change uh, how we understand the universe because the far you see the close to the birth of your of the universe okay so now in the recent times, uh, JW has, uh, JWST has uh, discovered a galaxy which is uh, born uh, 13.4 billion years ago. It means the light took time, you know, 13.4 billion years to reach you. And the universe is 13.8 billion years old, right? So it means the light which actually coming from that object, it is coming from a place where the universe is only 400 million years old and typical star if you see i mean like the our own sun they have a lifetime of like few hundred million years you know so it means it is already probing the galaxies the you know the environment where the universe is baby and that is the first question where we came from right and again the third question where we are going right so this will actually change so the jwst is going to see things which will forever change the way we understand the universe it will actually probe things which will really gives us answers okay and i really look forward for that
definitely sir with this great uh, discoveries we all are fired up to dive more into astronomy but again yeah. with this great technologies we are uh, we have few questions which are unanswered yet like dark mm-hmm. matters and what uh, it is actually means so mm-hmm. what's your call on that sir okay so uh, most of the you know terms related to dark in astronomy are uh, associated with things we do not know okay so dark matter is another interesting uh, kind of uh, arena you can say where people are actively uh, doing research and uh, you know i also uh, do actively uh, work on dark matter and related uh, theories and so on right so dark matter is basically uh, it's simple it's not the concept is actually simple so you know there are certain things which exist but you might not be able to see them for example it is simple you just you know uh, get into room in a, in a room and switch off all the lights at night right you can't see anything but that does not mean that they don't exist things exist you touch them you can feel that okay there is a uh, table there is a bed whatever right so if you look at galaxy okay now a galaxy is not a static object it actually rotates the stars gas in 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 the galaxy they actually revolves around the center of the galaxy right now what makes this you know what decides that how they should rotate that is basically decided by the amount of matter inside right so for example our own earth is revolving around sun so if the sun be more massive then the planet will actually revolve faster right so similarly in a galaxy how the stars how the gas is rotating that is decided by the amount of matter inside right so people have ways people can observe that how fast a star how fast a uh, gas or how fast a cloud in a galaxy is revolving now from there you can work out you know through newton's formula that if this guy is rotating for example 30 km per second velocity that how much matter you should have inside right now you can point your telescope and you can see that how much matter is there and these two does not match okay the amount of the speed at which it is rotating that is actually much faster than what you actually see it means then it requires and this is not a kind of uh, observation of one galaxy this is the observation of every galaxy and our observation cannot go so wrong that we predict this wrong thing for every galaxy no that is not possible and this discrepancy is like 10 times it is not like you know one times okay there is some measurement error and you can adjust into the error no you cannot so whatever you see and whatever the velocity the stars are moving around the galaxy center there is a 10 times discrepancy and from there people have theorized that there is some object or there is some matter which we can't see by our telescopes okay but they exist and they have gravity that is dark matter okay now people try are trying to understand from physics point of view from particle physics point of view that why we don't see dark matter so that is a active research area and if at all we can see what are the ways and people are building instrument for that uh, but till now we don't have luck to directly detect uh, dark matter but it is more of a you know certain that dark matter do exist uh, so so concerning with this what are the contradicts or theories that can be answered with a discoveries in dark matter yeah so there are many uh, theories which also you know gives you alternatives to dark matter for example one theory Uh, is modified newtonian dynamics which i also work on okay then there is modified gravity uh, theory uh, these theories uh, says that okay you don't need dark matter but you can modify newton's law okay so if you have some matter you are saying that it's supposed to produce this much of force okay then if you tickle the equation it can produce more force and hence more velocity right but you know this theories i mean 
can explain many of the observations but they are not foolproof yet many of the times they actually fail to uh, produce the observations for example you know gravitational lensing okay so these theories this modified newtonian dynamics they say that okay if you do not have dark matter you can modify the dynamical law that is newton's law and you can generate your velocity but then you know there are some cluster galaxy clusters where people have observed the gravitational lensing and that lens you know how much it will lens that depends that how much gravitating mass is there and there you need dark matter to produce that kind of arc you know the mass required so there you are not saying that okay i want to modify my dynamics you know even if you modify your dynamics so what you still need that much of matter to produce that you know lens so where does that matter comes from so there are questions but you know these theories do have some success you know some places uh, but there are then you know uh, at least astronomy community more or less kind of confident that dark matter exists and until and unless there is some really great breakthrough uh, we will be you know believing that dark matter exists at least i will believe that you know it does exist again sir again one thing here like concerning yeah. with the gravitational lensing concept uh mm -hmm. with respect to dark matters we have found mm -hmm. that uh, there are missing galaxies uh, nearby around our milky way so what's your call on that what's your view on that okay so that is another problem which is called uh, missing satellite problem okay so that is kind of uh, uh, the understanding our uh, you know how our universe actually came about how galaxies actually formed so Uh, the theory or the understanding we have right now uh, regarding you know galaxy formation and evolution so it says that if you have a large galaxy like our own milky way uh, you would expect that there are there would be many small small galaxies around it okay and the number predicted is like you know few hundred galaxies okay so but you don't see them when you go and try to look for them you only see like you know tens of them i mean till now the number around milky way is around 40 between 40 and 50 and this number is going up it is increasing but still it is you know falling short so then the question is that i mean wh where is the problem i mean either we don't understand how the galaxies are formed or how they evolve so there is a lacuna where you know we don't know how it happens or there is a possibility that these guys are there but for some reason we are not being able to find them okay so this is this is called missing satellite problem and i also you know do work on it i try to you know see or try to find out these galaxies in a sense uh, by looking by observing in radio wave okay so uh, kind of you do some different types of observation uh, because people have used traditionally optical telescope to uh, look these guys <coughs> in stellar light or op visible light but it might happen that they don't have enough stars they are just a blob of gas right they are not forming stars so in optical telescope you will not see them because they are not emitting enough light but with radio telescopes you will be able to catch them okay because they have gas in them so that is kind of one of the area which i am working on and this is kind of fascinating in a sense that it will tell you about uh, the understanding of our universe in a sense that how the galaxies actually formed over the time starting from the you know big bang okay so uh, yeah so that is a still active area which like many uh, people are trying to uh, you know work or trying to answer some of the fundamental questions So to build up for the next question, uh, let's let's say that we all know that astronomy has been in part of our has astronomy has been a part of our life for uh, several centuries now, and every contribution of an ancient astronomer has been added on to where we are reaching right now. But we possess a lot of advanced technology than what they did previously. So what do you think, sir? Should we rely on the conclusions that they have drawn? or should we keep questioning them and go ahead with making new assumptions and finding out more about the universe 
yeah so i have i mean uh, in my opinion that people should take a balanced approach okay just because ancient uh, not everything uh, is bad you know there are many insights uh, which people can uh, take from our ancient uh, studies and research they have done uh, certainly i mean we should not one should not uh, you know take everything blindly you should you should question otherwise we will not progress uh, but at the same time we also should think you know, if somebody has commented or somebody has given you a prescription to find out some stars in the sky what could be the reason behind it and maybe in that way we can uh, kind of you know discover we can uh, work out some of the very fascinating things i mean there is no reason to think that you know our uh, forefathers were stupid okay and uh, yes we do have uh, technologies we do have uh, kind of uh, uh, instruments which we which help us to you know explore more uh, but again like you know people had you know take philosophers take you know mathematicians uh, in earlier days they used to also have their own ways to find out and ultimately you know the universe has been the same and it is a observation uh, driven uh, science right astronomy and astrophysics so yes we do have better instruments but the observations were there even before you know if you see that how the uh, how people figured out that earth is revolving around sun that is fascinating and even we, we do have sophisticated instrument we can go out of uh, earth see many things but if you just sit at your home even in this 21 21st century and you do not know if, if you are not exposed to uh, sophisticated instruments theories and knowledge then if you ask people that tell me whether sun is revolving around earth or earth is revolving around sun it's still a tough question so i mean what i would like to kind of uh, think is the way is that our forefathers were not you know stupid you know if they have concluded something yes maybe their conclusions are wrong and maybe the, those conclusions were based on something which is which has a limited uh, knowledge of the theory and so this thing but that does not mean that you completely discard them yes you question and if this, you disprove it and you say that okay guys you were wrong here that is perfectly fine but that does not mean that you know everything is wrong and we should kindly you know cut off everything because who knows and there might be some hidden gems we will, you know recover or discover yeah so my approach would be like that it should be balanced definitely a great answer sir so the most contradicting approach towards this is the one question that we have about einstein's special relativity do you think space time continu continuum is the exact way that we think our universe would be right now uh, it is actually you know uh, uh, i mean both einstein's uh, special theory of relativity and a general theory of, theory of relativity uh, it is I mean, uh, to some extent, uh, very counterintuitive, you know. Uh, but the thing is that uh, it has been proven over and over again uh, by uh, measurements uh, that that is the right, you know, right way. For example, I can give you one example, which is which would be you know easy to perceive. Uh, People have people are using GPS, right? Global positioning system, right? On and off. Everybody uses that Google Map and so on. So when you kind of determine your position uh, in you know on Earth, so it uses uh, couple of satellites which are uh, revolving you know uh, around Earth, right? And the concept is very simple. Like if you are standing over here, and there are three satellites. And it is sending signal. What this signal is? This signal sends that at what time I have sent you the signal, right? What is my position? That is satellite's position, right? Now it is a electromagnetic radiation, light, okay, radio waves. So it sends you, it tells you that this is the time in my clock when I am sending you the signal. And in your device, you know when you have received the signal. So between these two numbers that how when it has sent and when it has you have received so you know the distance right 
that how long the flight you know took uh, time you know Correct. to travel so from there you know the distance now you know the position of the satellite and from there you know the distance that is like one stick then you have another satellite that is like second stick right so from the satellite to you now you build these two sticks but these two sticks can rotate like this right so your position can change you take another satellite three uh, third satellite again you do the same thing now these three sticks you cannot move one uh, you know each other without bending or breaking the other one okay so it means once you have these three numbers three distances you know exactly where you are standing right yeah, yeah. now now in classical uh, you know classical way uh, if you think that okay i do not we did not have einstein right so light goes you know in a straight path right and you just would be multiplying this c into t that is the velocity of light and the time taken delta t that is the length but light does not go in that way say for example you have the himalaya sitting in your path light will not travel in a straight line light will travel in a curved path okay and that correction is actually been put in your gps instrument now your sticks are not straight sticks they are kind of bent sticks so you need to know exactly that how long this delta t will be different so that my position and till i mean now the gps can measure with the accuracy of like few millimeters few centimeters right so if einstein is not right you will not be able to make those corrections because earth's gravity is not uniform you have somewhere uh himalayas you know mountains big mountains you have sea so due to the variation in the gravity the space time around earth is different so when the light will travel through this space time they will not travel exactly at the uh, straight line they will follow that you know curvature of the space and when do they do that the time taken you know the signal coming from the satellite and reaching your device will be different right and this correction is actually done in gps when you fly your uh, you know flights when you fly your fighter jets when you you know put your uh, satellites into orbit and they are correct so so einstein's theory is correct i mean and many times we don't realize it in our daily day life but if you go enough deep into you know instruments you see that you know they are very much at work great sir. so it does solidify that it does verify oh absolutely <laughs> great great thank you sir that was a good answer um so next question is again about something based on particle what do you think about antimatter sir what is its implication in our observable universe yeah particle and antiparticles are there i mean uh, Uh, but i am not a uh, kind of uh, particle physicist so i do not have much understanding about uh, antimatters and how people can observe them for that matter uh, but uh, there are like you know some conservation laws uh, in uh, uh, particle physics okay uh, that uh, if you have uh, you know you have to conserve uh, spin you have to conserve parity uh, like that okay and that kind of lead uh, to uh, you know prediction of antimatter but i am not sure actually i don't know uh, much about antiparticle and antimatter okay. sure so could there be some differentiating factor that you could add on to antimatter and dark matter if, if okay yeah, yeah. so uh, dark matter and uh, um, uh, antimatter so antimatter the way i understand is uh, i mean uh, i mean they would have special you know uh, property okay uh, but the dark matter till now what we know about dark matter is it has gravity okay uh, and you know it has some uh, particles it is constituted by some particles which are like you know massive they do not interact interact with electromagnetically for example they don't have viscous say for example if you have gas and you just push one gas to another there will be viscosity dark matter does not have that and about that so how it compares with anti uh, matter 
i am not sure I, and i don't think that you know people are too much of thinking in that direction i mean first of all we really do not know what dark matter is like what what is its nature in terms of particle only these uh, general uh, aspects we know that it has gravity it does not have uh, viscosity uh, it do not interact electromagnetically now the particles the matter particles actually do not qualify any of this because part matter has you know viscosity they have they do interact electromagnetically they do radiate uh, of course they have mass but anti uh, matter also i am not sure like what are the properties of anti matter which can kind of uh, club to uh, dark matter but i think uh, not many people are thinking in this line great all right thank you sir yeah uh, yeah so adding up with the uh, like theory of dark matters and their physics so on your view what's the relation between the galaxy clusters and the uh, physics of dark matters like how would you explain that into a layman term yeah so galaxy clusters are basically uh, you know assembly of uh, many galaxies it's just the traditional sense what the cluster means okay uh, so you have many galaxies uh, together and it's a bound system bound system means they are like part of a bigger structure and the way they are bound is by gravity okay now say for example if you just look a Uh, galaxy you know small galaxy or big galaxy as we have seen that there is dark matter and dark matter is actually one of the very important component which which produces lots of gravity and keep things tight you know uh, if you don't have that much of gravity it will just you know might fly away right so now when you are talking about galaxy clusters now they are like bigger assembly of many galaxies you know hundreds of galaxies now if you want to you know tie together all this big assembly you need that much of dark matter or sub dark matter so galaxy clusters are the place where you have lot lot of dark matter and lots of gravity and the gravity is so such a so it you know it attracts the gas and everything with such high uh, force the pressure in the galaxy cluster is very high and if you have high pressure you have high temperature and it is so you know temperature is so high it emits in x ray so if you see the galaxy clusters so they uh, radiate in x ray okay they are x ray bright and dark matter is one of the primary constituents of galaxy clusters without the dark matter uh, present in a galaxy cluster you will not be able to hold these many galaxies together okay so clusters are basically one of the largest structures in the universe and they also uh, give you much lot of the information how the universe actually came about for example if the universe is too small too young okay uh, for example 100 million years right so then these clusters they take time to form it's not like you know the universe is born galaxies are born everything came together and become a cluster no it takes time okay it takes time to galaxies come together it takes time to dark matter to develop and larger the galaxy cluster it took more time right now it means if i am saying the universe is too young then i will tell that you will not see many clusters you will see maybe one or two right if i say that the galaxy is very sorry the universe is very old then you would expect more number of clusters right so with that you know how big the clusters are and how many they are present in the universe in numbers that tells you about that how the universe has evolved how old the universe is what are the kind of governing dynamics which actually led to the uh, assembly of these galaxies together so clusters are very important people do actively used and they are largest you know one of the largest structure in the universe uh, so lot of the dynamics lot of the uh kind of you know the galaxy properties and evolution process so they they you know are very much well proved in this you know cluster environment so people uh, the astronomers all over the world uh, do focus a lot on galaxy clusters and dark matter is like one of the primary constituents of it adding up to this question like uh, in case dark matter theories fails up so what are the alternative theories which will support dark matters into it 
no so that is that's what i i was telling you so uh, uh, dark matter is one of the essential constituent that's why people still believe that dark matter is a uh, viable theory and the, any other theory cannot uh, replace uh, the dark matter but there are some alternative theories where people say that uh, you know if you remove dark matter from uh, from the universe and to form the clusters the kind of mass you have uh, in clusters so that can be kind of generated with a neutrino mass so people say that there is enough neutrino present which are uh, not easily uh, kind of detectable detecting neutrino is very hard their interaction cross section is very uh, low right and those neutrino they are have they, ha they are present in galaxy cluster in large numbers and they can make up for the mass but i frankly think that you know it's dicey you know it's not foolproof and it cannot explain the observations everywhere so uh, if you ask me that what could be the alternative theory to dark matter to explain galaxy clusters uh, it's difficult i mean my answer would be it's tough call to take yeah so uh, the question that we have for you in the end is the fact that we have galaxy andromeda coming towards our milky way is not in contradiction with the big bang uh, no 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 so this is a very uh, natural phenomena in a sense that galaxy regularly you know come close merge uh, produce new kind of galaxies you know produce new kind of stars so uh, big bang theory is basically the origin of the universe it tells that how the universe is come about okay and then when the universe evolved over time it cooled down it formed matter it formed gas it formed galaxies right and then the galaxies uh, kind of you know fall under uh, each each other's gravity they come closer go through merger all these are basically process uh, which are uh, part of the evolution of the universe part of the evolution of galaxies and they are completely consistent with uh, uh, big bang theory and again like the milky way and the andromeda which are like the you know big uh, neighbors okay they are kind of attracting each other gravitationally they are pulling each other and over the time over the course of time they will go they will collide and there are beautiful uh, simulations are also there that you know that is kind of you know where we are going but again uh, the time scales are too huge you know the galaxy takes like uh, giga year you know billions of years to uh, kind of you know come closer and merge so you know uh, our sun will actually die much before that okay <laughs> sun will not survive uh, uh, giga year uh, time scale so uh, so yes uh, it will happen at some point uh, but we don't need to worry about it because it's not happening not today not tomorrow not even our lifetime not even our <laughs> milky way's life uh, sorry solar system's uh, lifetime uh, but there is no contradiction of big bang theory with with this merger it's very natural and you will see if you look at the universe if you look at the uh, space there are examples of many such galaxies where like uh, two big galaxies or two small galaxies they come closer to merge and in fact the large galaxies are born like that okay uh, it's it's not like that the large galaxies just born out of you know uh, you know a gas and dark matter and stars no so the small galaxies actually born first and then these small galaxies they come closer together they merge then they become larger and these large galaxies uh, you know come about through this merging process so this is a very essential process which is required to kind of form i'm sure the milky way has also uh, gone through mergers uh, before uh, which uh, is essential kind of to have uh, you know sustainable uh, galaxy formation so to speak yeah so sir uh, do you believe in these mergers life will still exist because that's an astronomical event our right. life is very tiny so right. what do you think about uh, what do you think that there's a chance that if there were life on other such galaxy and it went through a merger and that is why it did not sustain life eventually after that do you think similar kind or something will happen with us as well if we 
see if we like will we cease to exist if we are existing in a giga year scale yeah. uh, what what is the chances of that happening yeah so uh, i mean i can give you answer uh, this answer with an example so yes uh, this mergers uh, do happen uh, but the how it will impact our solar system how it will impact uh, life uh, if it is you know do if it does exist uh, till giga year say for example i have a big elephant okay which is coming running towards you know some plant or some tree and there is a very small mosquito which is kind of fly okay now this big elephant coming with some speed it will encounter it will hit a mosquito so what do you think the mosquito will die mosquito will not die okay so the interaction strength and the devastation or the impact of a uh, collision or some you know processes like that that depends on the scales when two objects have the similar scale okay then the impact is much larger okay now you think that you know most of the you know most of our galaxy you know have empty space it's not like you know we have stars like sun then the, our nearest uh, neighbor is actually quite far away right and in between this space is mostly empty and when this merger happens it does not means it does not mean that it sweeps everything away okay it does not mean that you know two car is are two cars are colliding no it's not like that most of the places are still empty they fall under gravity they fall under uh, you know this process some places there will be shock some places there will be uh, uh, too much of energetic activity will go on but not all the places okay now if you are lucky enough to be in a place where there is not much of the activity is going on you will basically survive i don't think that so there is a chance it depends like where you are what is the impact but again these impacts does not mean the impact like you know two cars will collide and everything is over even like you know if two cars are collide and if some ant chitty is there inside uh, the car and might survive actually humans might not right so similarly i mean we are sitting in a big vessel the galaxy is huge with respect to the galaxy we are you know so tiny so when these mergers happen when this merger goes through we it might we might be just like this <laughs> i mean so maybe some shiny stuff will appear in our uh, sky but that does not mean that it completely can completely destroy us but there is a chance it might but yeah, equally chance is that it might not so uh, like there are a few questions of mine which i uh, personally like to ask many people so yeah. uh, the gravitational theories so somebody like many people say it's on force and many are theories are there which says it it's on space time fabric curve so like what's your call on that like what's your theories on that what's your views on uh, this particular thing okay so uh, i mean okay so the gravity uh, in classical uh, terms it is a force okay but again if you go to the so this is basically the description i mean it is more like uh, how do i describe a phenomena okay uh, for example uh, one can describe a table just by calling a table the same table one another person who is a mathematician can describe with a function fx is equal to uh, some constant value when the height is 3 feet every, everywhere is 0 it is bounded by x less than 5 y less than this so like that so now the outcome of a theory okay that must satisfy the observation but how do you describe your theory that the description okay that description can vary okay that does not mean that the object changes okay so theory in theory you explain that okay gravity by a force you feel that force right so that feeling is correct that is the outcome of your theory is correct now if you want to describe by a force or by a field field theory i mean people describe you know it as a field okay or you can describe by it is a you know fabric of space time 
now fabric of space time is a more general description it is not uh, because you know uh, if you just describe the gravity by a force right the photon does not have a mass then how come if you have more gravity the photon bends right so in that description your this phenomena cannot be described but you can describe the same thing that phenomena that is the bending of light using the space time fabric you say i have gravity that bends my space time fabric and a photon is bound to travel through the space time fabric okay so it will bend right so that is the description now you can say that certain kind of description uh, will be valid uh, in certain kind of circumstances for example the classical mechanics and quantum mechanics uh, when your particles are big you say that this description is good enough in my daily -day life but when i go to subatomic particles this description actually is not good enough right so till now regarding the gravity the general theory of relativity is the more concrete uh, way to explain but again you have to understand that it is not easy to understand so i mean you represent your stuff depending on you know what what you are doing you know to make life easier nothing else actually It's to better lucidly to understand uh, the thing but uh, for gravity at least the gtr is basically the most uh, uh, comprehensive theory which actually describe describe it but maybe tomorrow the some easier theory will come which will do the exactly the same job same description but again i mean we as physicist i mean we give theory right that is coming out of our imagination right we do not know whether it is true or not we give a theory and say that this theory predict this it matches so it might be true but nobody can tell that this is the truth this is this description is the only description which is there in the uh, nature okay only we can verify the predictions we see okay if this is the description we suppose to see this we suppose to see this and this okay it describe this this is tick this is correct this is correct and this is correct so my theory might but tomorrow might some observation will come which might not be right okay which might not be compatible then you need to you can sit down and think of okay my description is probably not correct what changes we need to do and this has been this has been the uh, forte or this has been the protocol since the science began people would start with the simplest theory possible which can explain uh, their observation and then they keep modifying that stuff when the new and newer observations and experiments come up, comes up right and that is that is how like different theory over the time get discarded new theories comes and like that the i mean even if you the see the two theories classical uh, theory of you know particles behavior and the quantum uh, mechanics classical mechanics and quantum mechanics quantum mechanics is the better description that is you know people think that that is the way particles behave but you see the classical mechanics is still used right so in some real you know your this instrument is sufficient but if you ask a theorist or i ask a physicist which one is correct classical or quantum he or she will say that we don't know maybe quantum is also not correct so that's all we have for you today sir thank you so much and hope we will talk to you again hope we have a few more questions which line up in our comment section so thank you for having us thank you for your valuable insight over all these questions and hope you have a great day ahead thank you everyone yeah. thank thank you thank you guys also and uh, you really appreciate i really appreciate your effort to take astronomy astrophysics and these general questions to common people i really um, hope that this spreads and i wish all the best to you keep it up and whatever uh, you know we could do as a uh, member of scientific community be me and be our department or be uh, other uh, people in the community uh, we would really would like to help you and take this thing to uh, more people to more you know to light more minds thank you